All right, hello, welcome everyone. My name is Peter, and I would like to welcome you here to this, another Peter Draws content-free podcast. Now, I know it has been quite a while since I've done one of these, and for that, I, in a way, apologize, but to tell the truth, I was just, uh, well, I was not doing the podcasts because I didn't feel like doing the podcasts, and I hope you can understand that. I really appreciate that I can. Uh, I appreciate that I'm in a position to do these podcasts when I feel like it, and I think they are probably better that I, you know, because I have only ever done them when I felt like doing them. I have never forced a podcast. I've never sat down to do one when I didn't want to, right? We, we, we'll never, hopefully, we'll never know what a, what a forced podcast will be like. Uh, I, I hope we never see the day, or any of my videos, right? Anyways, I, you might notice right off the bat here that the, the format is slightly different. I don't know what episode this is. This, I think we're in the early 20s somewhere. This could be, if I took a wild guess, I would say this is episode 22, but it could be episode 21 or 20 or, I hope it's not 24 because I do remember that around episode 24, I wanted to have 24 hours of podcast in the first 24 episodes, and that was going to be season one, right? I mentioned that somewhere along the way. Anyways, I, as you can see, for this, I've transitioned to recording my face. Um, however, I feel like it doesn't matter a lot because, oh, uh, you know, the whole idea of a podcast, I guess, is that some people listen to it without looking at it. I upload this to a lot of places. I use some, you know, some service that uplo automatically uploads it to every platform it's supposed to be on, you know, Spotify, YouTube, you know, Google Play, iTunes, uh, whatever podcasting app you use on your phone or your computer or whatever. It should be there, hopefully. Um, but none of those places uh, support the video. There's just a video accompanied here so that I can post it on YouTube. Then again, there are quite a few videos on YouTube with just one static screen for, uh, and, you know, and just a bunch of audio, you know, things like audiobooks and stuff like that seem to do all right, but I don't mind recording my face here. I do feel like some of the videos I made, the podcast where I was recording myself drawing, I like the idea of that, but when I sat down to draw for like one hour, it always felt a little bit weird because I was often done in about half the time and I was never sure if I should start another drawing or just keep kind of aimlessly adding stuff and it was to draw for a specific amount of time has never really worked for me it's maybe a good way to get started drawing but it like to make yourself keep drawing just just because you're thinking I need to keep drawing right I don't know it's just it it's not a it's not good for the drawing itself all of those times I think I should have just started another drawing. Anyways, it's fine. Um, hopefully, the drawing wasn't your favorite part of the podcasts. And if this is the first podcast video you've ever seen, um, hopefully you don't mind looking at my face or just not looking at the video at all, and you can just listen to my voice while you do other things. I don't know what people do while they listen to podcasts, although I have kind of a little bit started listening to a podcast um, I, I've had a, look, I've had a rocky, rocky relationship with podcasts. Mostly they just don't really click with whatever activity I'm doing. My, I, my, I can't, I find my brain can't latch onto them and I can't pay attention to what's going on or I just enjoy other things more like watching the movies or TV out of the corner of my eye or just listening to music. But, um, the past few days, um, actually by the, by that, I mean the past one day, that is two day. I did listen to some podcasts. I was listening to 99% Invisible, and uh, I was listening to it while I was doing schoolwork at school, and it was actually going pretty well, all right? So 
maybe we'll see if that's a trend that continues or not. Um, the, the most terrifying thing about mentioning podcasts on the internet is that as soon as you do, if you have, if there's even any hint that you're open to suggestions about what podcast to listen to, you will immediately become a hit with a, you know, a, a deluge of podcast suggestions. And that's okay. Hey, go ahead and hit me with those podcast suggestions. I'm mentally prepared, but I have been hit with that flood before when I wasn't mentally prepared. And I mean, I was still okay then, but anyways, I know you're all dying to just find out what's going on with, uh, my coffee life. And I will tell you my coffee life is pretty robust right now. If I'm uh, you know, for the mornings I'm home, I'm, I've been using the the French press. I heat up water in a little electric kettle, which I like because it's clear and it has little blue LED lights that are on. And then once it's boiling, it, it cuts off, it clicks, it cuts off, and uh, the light cuts off too. And it's just, and it's just done, right? And it's ready. And I pour the hot water, the boiling water into my French press on top of the grounds that are already there. I've been um, eating countercultures mostly because some people um, like Chrissy, who have, you've seen this in a previous video, um, send me counterculture, but I also, that has gotten me, you know, I'm spoiled and now I can't go back. I buy counterculture for myself, um, these beans, and I grind them myself. I don't have a little coffee grinder. You know, I'm, I act like a coffee snob, even though I try to not actually be a coffee snob. I, it's, it's rare that I have coffee I don't like, okay? I constantly say this about myself, and I hope it's true. Anyways, so I have heard, though, people said in the comments before, I, I read your comments, okay? I, I usually just scroll. You know how you do that thing on, like, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is you do on your phone that you're just, like, scrolling? It's like, it's just like a kind of a, you lay back and just absorb stuff for a while, I kind of do that with my own YouTube comments. Like it's nice because if, if I think, hey, I haven't opened my own YouTube comments in a few hours, there's probably a bunch of new ones. I, I'm really spoiled that I have this, you know, this feed of like posts, comments that are all about things I've done, like responding to me and all about my content. And, you know, and most of them are really nice too, but. Um, you know, most people don't have that. So, you know, when a lot, a lot of people say, you know, oh yeah, I'm on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And I, I, I try not to say, oh yeah, I don't really, I don't really look at Instagram or I don't really look at Twitter. Cause looking at my own YouTube comments is kind of my own version of that. Um, anyways, I do read them. I think I read probably 90% of all the YouTube comments these days. Every now and then there is like a, some, just some string of events that makes it so that I don't keep up with them all. But I read almost all of them. I'm sorry that I don't respond to all of them, but I do try to heart the ones that, you know, make me smile or I just really agree with, or, um, I don't know, there's some, in some way strike a chord with me, right? I heart them. And, uh, but I really do appreciate all of you and the way you comment and how uh, kind and creative and thoughtful you are. Um, yeah, so then I make coffee. If, if I'm at home in the French press, oh yeah, the one comment I saw was that I shouldn't pour the water into the French press on the coffee grounds immediately after it's done boiling. I should wait like a some amount of time, I don't know what amount of time, some nebulous amount of time, um, until the water's slightly cooler, still very hot, right? What if, if water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, maybe I would wait till like, what, 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 195? I don't know. So then you would pour it into the French press what is this because it like burns the ground somehow or it's just better? All I know is that I've tried it in multiple different ways. Um, 
you know, pouring the water in right as it boils, waiting, waiting a little longer, or sometimes I even grab the kettle right as it seems like, you know, right before it comes to a full boil, which I grab it off the base of the thing, which makes it stop boiling. It's, excuse me, and I even try it that way. And uh, like I said, I think this is one of the reasons why I don't really consider myself a coffee snob is because I don't, I don't notice the difference. How many years do I have to drink coffee before I start noticing a difference? Or is it because I just don't pay attention enough? Because I really enjoy coffee. Maybe I need to go to like a coffee tasting where, they, you know, they give you like different little shots, little glasses, you know, with freshly brewed stuff. And they, they teach you, they, they point out the different flavors and textures and notes. And they describe, you know, which part of the world it came from and how it was picked, when it was picked and the textures and all this stuff. Right. And then maybe I would learn a little bit and appreciate it a little bit more. That could be interesting to do. Um, but it, you know, sometimes even I forget that my coffee is steeping in the French press and I, you're supposed to only leave it in there for five minutes. I've left it in there for like 10, 15, 30 minutes before. And, you know, even so it's like really starting to cool down before I, I plunge the plunger in there and pour myself a cup. Um, sometimes I, you know, I pour that, pour that first cup and the, the whole pot, uh, the whole French press thing is just the perfect temperature to just start chugging. And it's just, it's so good. Anyways, that's my routine for when I'm at home. And a lot of these mornings, though, I'm not at home. I, most of my classes, five days a week, I start school at, um, you know, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, no, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I st- my classes start at 9 a.m. And then Tuesday, Thursday, my classes start at 9.30 a.m. And to some people, that might be early. Some people, it might not be. But I try to get there every morning by 7.30. Now, if you're thinking, Peter, it's a little bit crazy to get there two hours early. I really have no rebuttal. It is a little bit crazy, but the parking is better then. Because there are other people in the same building and surrounding buildings that do have classes that start at like 8 o'clock, I guess. And so those parking lots around there fill up quick. And I'm tired and sick and tired of having to park in the shuttle, the, the commuter lot, right? It makes my day worse. My day is far better getting there two hours early than it is getting there 15 minutes early and having to take the shuttle from a, from a distant parking lot. Plus I get there, I'm up early. It's a good start to my day because I have a nice little space set up. I, I grab two desks. I, I made, I kind of etched out a very comfortable little area for myself there at school in the studio where I have to go five days a week. And, you know, I took my old coffee maker, which I used to use and which I have talked about at length in previous podcasts. And I set it up there. I plugged it in. I took some coffee grounds that some people have given me and I even bought more of the same kind of coffee grounds. Once again, here at this, at this, um, at school, I have to take pre ground coffee because I don't have a grinder there. Uh, but and this is a, I guess what you would call a drip coffee maker. Uh, what, what brand is it? Does anyone remember? Is it, is it coffee mate? No, that's not right. That's too obvious. Is that even a brand of coffee maker? KitchenAid? It might be KitchenAid. It's like the chrome thing with the little, uh, metal, like switch on the front that looks like it could be an airplane cockpit for, for something as you're going through the checklist, you know, on an airplane, in an airplane pre-flight checklist. Anyways, it's one of those switches and I have it all set up there. I get there early. The first thing I have to do is I, I even got a little, uh, a a three M, um, command like coat hook that I put up on the wall. So I hang up my coat 
and I water my spider plant, which I have hanging there, which Crunch gave to me. Every now and then I email him and update him. Uh, there are not any like big sprouts, because you, know, you know how like there's a spider plant, I have it hanging, and there's like all these tendrils coming out, I guess like the spider legs, so to speak. Uh, and then ideally, once they grow and mature enough and run out of space in the pot, maybe, uh, they will send out a tendril at, at the end of another, a different kind of tendril at the end of which, uh, like another whole kind of spider plant thing will start growing. And that's what I'm truly excited about for that to start happening. And it hasn't quite started happening yet. I've seen a couple of those little, uh, goobers start to grow up out of there, but one of them kind of grew up and then grew kind of right back down into the pot again. I don't know. I probably should have helped a little bit. But I was just kind of watching. I do want to get some more plants for the studio because it really does help make things nicer. And, you know, the the sun, the, we have nice big windows there and the sun comes filtering through the plants. It's so nice. I have a plant right here, uh, but I might actually take this one to school because it would look so much nicer there. And uh, I need to Google how much sunlight it should get because it can, it can, you can get a lot of sun in those windows there. Uh, they're south facing windows. But this, this, they're very tall and high, so kind of all through the day, especially in the early morning, there's a ton of sun that hits them, and a ton of direct sunlight early in the morning, and then indirect sunlight all through the day. Hmm. It'd be cool to get some flowering plants, but I think those don't flower all the time, but they would look pretty all the time. I don't know. Where's a good place to get plants? Out back of Home Depot. Oh, I went to Home Depot just now. I had the worst experience. Now, I mean, I've heard of people having bad experiences at Home Depot, and it wasn't really that bad. But it was just one of those feelings when you go to a store, and you're just kind of standing around and looking around, and you're like, does anyone work here? Like, where is everybody? Like, there's tons of cars out front. You hardly even see any other customers. You suddenly feel like you're in a zombie apocalypse. I was wandering around the lumber section. It was just deserted. I found a, a piece of uh, MDF. What does MDF stand for? Medium density fiber board? I feel like if it was that, then it would be called MDFB. But maybe it's called maybe it's called MDF board. I think it's just called MDF. Mm. Massive dark friend Frank Furter. The D has got to stand for dense or density. And I would I, f I feel like the M stands for medium. But I haven't heard of, you know, like LDF for light density or HDF for heavy or SDF for super dense stuff. Anyways, I'm, I'm using, I got a board of it, a piece of MDF that I needed cut. I mean, I didn't really need it cut, but actually I did at least need it cut in half so I could fit it in my car. Um, right. Thankfully, I got it. I finally got it cut in quarters. I got it, I got it drawn and quartered uh, by a guy from the plumbing section, who reluctantly helped me. I mean, thank, thank you, guy from the plumbing section. The guy who should have been running the the woodcutter was just like on a phone call for ages and ages. And everyone I asked, I was like, "Is there anyone that can run the uh, the uh, the board cutter?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, let me go." get the guy who runs it. And then they come back and be like, yeah, he's, he'll be with you in a second. Um, he's just on a phone call. I'm like, okay, well it's been like f however many seconds, 60 times 15 is someone do the math. It's been 15 minutes. So I've, I got the guy, I snagged the guy from the plumbing section as he was coming back from his lunch break and he fiddled with it like several times it looked like the thing was totally jamming up, locking up, but he, he, like one time he didn't put the, the, the hose to, to suck up the, 
the sawdust onto the thing that shoots out sawdust. And so it shot out sawdust. Anyways, I got my thing, my MDF cut up. And then I wandered around because I was looking for like, I was just, I didn't want to be that guy that asks someone for tiny plastic hoses. Because what the, what is that? Tiny plastic hoses. But that's what I want because I, I want that for uh, kit bashing. Now, really, I think I could get it from stripping electrical wires, but I don't want to have to do that, even though I think I might have to. Like, that's the kind of, that's like the size of tiny plastic hoses that I want. Like, what else, where else would I get that? What could that be? Like, what is that? That Where could I buy something that is tiny plastic hoses? What would be the practical application of tiny plastic hoses? Or tubes, or tiny plastic pipes, tiny tiny conduits, something like that. Cause I just want to make like kit bashing models, but then I want to, I love like, you know, you've seen, if you've seen my drawings before, you know that I love little tubes and tentacles and tendrils and stuff. And I want to be able to add that to my kit bashing. Right. Anyways, I feel like, wait, what was I saying? Uh, I don't know what I was saying, but yeah, it was kind of a, kind of a weird experience at Home Depot. Then I went outside to go back in my car and it was just like one of those days where you look at the sky and the sky just seems to be totally void of any color or texture at all. And the air feels like exactly the same like temperature as your skin. Like it's like you walk outside and it you feel like half of the experience of the world forgot to load in. Like you can't see the sky, you can't feel the air. I couldn't smell anything. It was just like one of those weird featureless days that I had to drive home in. But speaking of driving, I will say I did recently buy a new car for the first time in forever, a Toyota Corolla 2018. First time but before this, it was, I had a 2003 um, Nissan Altima. Let's see, what's the difference there? It's like, was that like a 15 year difference? So it was a big upgrade for me. And I have only all of you to thank because that's all, all of you paid, paid for that car for me. So thank you. Thank you very much. All the, all these, uh, sponsorships I've been doing recently paid for it. So thank you for tolerating those with me. And, uh, I really appreciate it. Y'all are a great community and I am endlessly thankful for this to be a, like a real thing that's happening to me. Like, I don't know. I never planned on being a YouTuber or even an artist, but I'm trying to make the most of it without, without burning out or selling out or completely selling out. I mean, I want to, there was a shift I made a while ago where I wanted to, I was, I, I was starting to burn out. So I had to kind of change gears. That's when I started doing sponsorships and stuff. Uh, I thought, Hey, you know, this is, it's taking a toll on me like a real job. So I should actually, you know, people are already watching ads that YouTube puts, puts there. And I'm making ad, ad revenue. I might as well stop pretending that I'm not making money off of this or that I'm not doing it for money or I don't know. I was playing a lot of weird mental games that I probably am still playing. I haven't gotten it figured out completely. Uh, but, uh, thank you for bearing with me as I do try to figure it all out. Money and art and careers jobs. I like, I don't know how long I'll be doing this, but it's all a weird thing. Um, but I'm enjoying, I'm trying to enjoy the process and I enjoy having all of you here for sure. Um, all right. That weird segment over, I will describe to you a typical day that I go through. Wait, wait, wait. I have actually, I will do that in a second. I do actually have another another other special segment here, which does benefit a little bit from having the video 
running on my face, but if you're listening to just the audio of this, have no fear, I will describe in great detail everything that's going on, and you will not miss a thing. Here's going to be a little segment where I sample a couple of beverages that I found in the grocery store. Um, I was shopping, I bought um, a little package of pork chops. Excuse me. Now, there are a lot of people that comment in the comments recently, seems more and more often lately, um, and the two the two comments that jump out to me the most lately are the ones that people say, this guy sounds like he's always about to yawn, or he's always, he sounds like he's always about to burp. I don't know about yawning, but I agree that I both sound like and feel like I'm always about to burp. There, I don't think I burp that often, but there's something about speaking into a microphone. I don't know, maybe it's the way you sit or the, I don't know, just the constant talking that does put some pressure on your diaphragm or something, and it does make me either want to burp or hold back burps. Maybe I need vocal training or something. But yes, that you're not totally wrong is what I'm saying. I apologize if it bothers you a lot. I'm going to sit up a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm adjusting the mic. Hopefully it's not too loud. I'm recording this video, if you're watching it, on uh, my GoPro. Hopefully it's coming through all right. I'm, I try new things sometimes. Sometimes I don't try new things for a great deal of time. But every now and then, I do. Anyways, this new segment... Oh, yeah. So I was, walk, I was grocery shopping. I bought a pack of four thin pork chops, um, two of which I had for dinner last night, the other two which I had for breakfast this morning, just kind of bookending my sleep. And uh, hey, hey, if you're wondering, like, Peter, you are not going to make it far on a diet like that. I did just have a salad for dinner, mostly for my own conscience, because I, I also start worrying about things like that. And, yeah, I, I was just going to tell you what I what else I bought at the grocery store. I bought the package of pork chops. I just like saying the word pork chop, really. I bought a loaf of Dave's Killer Bread, I think it's called. It's just like nice, um, meaty bread is the only way I can think of to say it. It's like, there's a lot to it. I wish the, maybe the, the slices were a little thicker. Um, I bought two packs of smoked ham, two packs of thinly sliced provolone. I bought some more Hellman's Real Mayo, some more uh, Grey Poupon Dijon mustard. I bought two more 12 packs of uh, like grocery store brand seltzer water. Because the last time I went there, I had them under my cart, these two 12 packs, and I loaded all the other groceries into my car and then I must have pushed the cart over into the cart return because I'm a good person who does that. And then I drove home and I got home and I was t picking all my groceries up out of the back seat and I was thinking, it's not usually this easy to pick up all the groceries. Oh yeah, there's usually two, two 12 packs of seltzer which are incredibly heavy. And I can usually only bring one of them at a time with all my other groceries. And neither of them are there. Because I put them in the, the floor of the back driver's side back seat. Uh, and they weren't there. So I, I must have just left them in the bottom, the bottom part of the shopping cart and put them in the cart return. Which must have made it a little bit annoying for the guy who goes to collect all the carts, you know. And has to push like 50 of them in at a time. Because what does he do with them then? He, he, what does he have to take in like a separate separate trip to take those in or did he just toss them to the side or maybe I guess he could line up all the carts and just kind of put them on top and bring them in or maybe go put them in his car real quick I guess if they're out there they've already been paid for huh but if you find them there I assume there's a tiny chance that someone could be coming back for them at any second because they could have just left them there and they they could notice like right away anyways what else did I get uh, yeah, I think I hit up the hot buffet. I got like some noodles, you know, like a little, like a little buffet dish with like some, it's like, it's like a, they call it a Eastern, like a Eastern buffet. So it's like Asian food noodles. Uh, I always 
make sure to get some broccoli from that thing. Like I fill up like half of it with broccoli because I like broccoli and they say it's good for me. And I also get like some, some sort of chicken, something in there. And I also got, I also got another thing of bananas. Mostly, usually for breakfast these days, before I go to school, I've been making a bowl of oatmeal, which I put uh, almond milk in. And then I've been trying different, I, I microwave it for three minutes with a little, like a plate on top to keep it from bubbling out. Now, sometimes I, when I put this plate on top while it's microwaving, sometimes I take the plate back off and it's totally unscathed. Like it has only like some water droplets on it from like condensation. But then sometimes I take it off after microwaving and there is like a uh, tons of icky ooky oatmeal on it. As if there was like, you know, like it was bubbling up and splashing a lot. And I think I'm pretty good at putting the exact same amount in the bowl every time because this is a bowl my sister painted for me and gave to me and there are these little patterns on it around the sides and I, and I fill it right up to the edge of these patterns. So I, there's not a lot of variation in what, how much I put in there, but there is a lot of variation in how it seems like this stuff is acting, uh, as it's under the apparently extremely violent forces of the microwaves bombarding the oatmeal. Anyways, I microwave it for three minutes and it starts cooling down a little bit because this is all happening while I'm taking a shower in the mornings. Because so, it gets really hot. But I want those oats to really, you know, get softened a little bit by the by the almond milk. And then so at first, when I first started this, I kind of go through phases. Like, I don't know how long this oatmeal phase will last. I hope it lasts a while because it seems cheap and healthy and quick and easy. Um... The pork chop thing does seem like it's a bad omen, but hopefully tomorrow I'll pull it back together again. I don't have any more pork chops to eat. Um, the first the first thing I did, I tried to add something to the oatmeal to make it a little more interesting, right? So the first time, for like the first week or two, I added blueberries. Very, like tons of blueberries. Not tons, but enough, right? I'm not holding back. Like, I think I have bad memories from my childhood when my mom, you know, Maybe it wouldn't have given me as many as I wanted, but now it's my oatmeal. I'm buying the blueberries. I put a lot of blueberries in there and they're only blueberries. Like those have antioxidants in them, right? Prevents hardening of the arteries. But the same kind of thing happens when I make myself a sandwich with Dave's killer bread and the smoked turkey and the provolone cheese and the, 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 the mayonnaise and the mustard. I think when I, growing up, I, only would have gotten maybe two pieces of ham on there if I was lucky and one piece of cheese. And I don't know if this is just because my mom didn't think we needed to eat that much or she was just being frugal or we might have been poor. You know, it's hard to tell when you're growing up because it's all you know and you don't really have a whole lot to, com to compare it with. Maybe she's just being healthy. Like maybe you only need one piece of cheese. Maybe you only need two pieces of ham. Maybe more than that is bad for you. But because of that, and because I find myself being able to buy lots of ham pretty easily, I've been putting sometimes like four or five pieces of ham on there, three pieces of cheese. I mean, it fills you up more. You don't have to, you know, you don't want another sandwich as soon. I mean, that's basic like calorie math, right? I don't know. I don't know if I should feel bad or, or not. I mean, if you go to a sandwich place and order a ham sandwich, then it, you'd probably ask for your money back if it had two slices of ham and one slice of cheese on it, you know? I mean, I enjoyed, hey mom, I know you don't watch these videos anymore, but hey, I enjoyed her sandwiches. I have good memories of them. I'm not trying to bash her sandwiches, but I, I am just noticing that I'm reacting to my childhood a little bit here, All right? Anyway, so after I got tired of the blueberries, I tried, uh, wait, what, what was the other thing I tried? Hmm. Blueberries. And then what's another fruit? It wasn't strawberries. Cause I would have had to like cut the little 
green stuff off the top. I would have never done that. Now I'm on bananas, is what I'm saying. I bought bananas. I'm on my second bunch of bananas. It, they're good in oatmeal because they're. it's harder to tell if they're not ripe enough, a little too ripe. The whole oatmeal experience masks them a little bit. When I eat them plain, just by themselves, straight out of the peel, uh, I'm a little bit more picky. And I'm trying to think what, what the other th- fruit is that I tried in between blueberries and bananas. Hmm. Not peaches. I did buy some oranges for a while, but I didn't put any oranges in, in the oatmeal. Do people do that? Is that a thing? It's a little weird, huh? Also, oranges bother me a little bit. I got a little bit discouraged because there are some oranges I like the flavor of. Or, all right. First of all, there's this whole group of fruits, you know, that's like uh, clementines, navel oranges, regular oranges, uh, halos, you know, cuties. You know about all these different types of oranges, sub-oranges? I call all of them oranges. So just for the record, I was buying different things, which may or may not have actually technically been oranges, but they were orange. You had to peel them. They came apart in little crescent sections, right? And they tasted more or less the same. But I will say they didn't actually taste the same because some of them really do kind of taste better. But the ones that tasted the best that I noticed as I shopped around a little were the hardest to peel. So I was really conflicted, right? Because some of those oranges I feel like have been bred to the peel kind of just falls off of them and it's very satisfying. But then some of the other ones are just so sweet and delicious. They're a huge pain to peel. And by the end of it, you've got like, all this orange peel stuff like under your fingernails as you're like clawing away at it, your fingers are all sticky and stuff. And it's just a huge pain. And you, you, you kind of given up halfway through and you're eating these orange, orange slices that still have like this, like chunks of it on there. You have, you never really get it all off sometimes. Anyways, I kind of gave up, but what is that other fruit I tried? I, let me just name fruits, oranges, Blueberries. Bananas. Wait, bananas are a fruit, right? Strawberries. Mango. Papaya. Guava. Kiwi. Apple. Lemon. Lime. Peach. Pear. Parsnip. Persimmon. Am I saying only things that start with P? Oh no, I'm sniffling. (gasps) It was raspberries. Wait. It could have been blackberries. I very easily get raspberries and blackberries mixed up. Is it just me or do they look almost identical except one is slightly purpler? Am I missing something there? Something obvious about raspberries and blackberries? And do, I don't... If you put a raspberry or a blackberry in my mouth and I wasn't looking, I don't think I could tell you the difference uh, just from taste. I don't really know what is going on there. Are they actually two different things? I'm assuming if I see one and it's like black, uh, then it's a blackberry. And if I see one and it's kind of purple, then it's a raspberry. But what if there are there really, really dark raspberries that look like blackberries and they're actually raspberries or kind of light blackberries, you know, that are kind of purplish, that look a lot like raspberries. I mean, they do anyways, is what I'm saying. There's, I think we just need to make another name that kind of works. There probably is some scientific name that kind of like, you know, there's like, family, phylum, species. You know how there's like these these nested uh, words for everything? There's probably some other word above these two that kind of encompasses both of them. And I would like to know that word and I would like that word to become more popular so that I can talk about both of them confidently and not constantly be second guessing if I was talking 
uh, about a raspberry or blackberry if I had a raspberry or blackberry for lunch if you know if the... anyways that's what it was it was pretty good it was pretty good in the in the in the oatmeal except uh they got they they get kind of soft and there was maybe about 10% of the raspberries in a little container I think they're raspberries I'm just going to say that uh that looked like they were like overripe or they were squished or they had like stuff growing on them I don't know if they were really moldy or if that was just part of how raspberries do but I couldn't eat them you know I don't know if I was just that's just me being a me being soft and picky but I didn't want to eat them so I didn't sorry if that was really wasteful anyway some other stuff I bought was oh sometimes I walk around in the grocery store and I'm like oh I wonder what in the world that is like, you know, like, what is that? Why are they selling that? Where did that come from? What's the big deal? I would like to try that, but I don't really have a good reason because I probably won't like it and it's expensive and it's just ridiculous. Uh, but I thought, Hey, I could do a segment here in the podcast where I buy one or two of these things and I try them for you and give you a review. So here's the first one. It's called, uh, Kona Red Cold Brew Coffee Original Kona Blend, 12 fluid ounces, 355 milliliters. Excuse me, there was one of the burps I was holding back. Now, if you can't see the video, if you're not looking at the video, if you're just listening to the audio somewhere, um, in my hand right now is a small glass bottle. Uh, It has a metal twist off cap on top the bottle is about uh i would say six inches tall two and a half inches wide sorry i was was measuring it on my cutting mat just now it's a small glass bottle and i was trying to i was going to try to describe its shape but i don't know that might be beyond me it's kind of shaped kind of like a like a miniature Old fashioned rum rum jug without the little round handle, if you know what I mean. Does anyone else agree with that? Um, anyways, it has a brown, a brown label that says all that stuff on it about Kona Red cold brew coffee. Um, here on the side, it says functional, traceable, sustainable, and there's a logo of Hawaii. Save our environment, please recycle. And then there's some states where you can recycle it. For five cents, Hawaii and ME is that Maine, and then in Oregon, recycle for ten cents, and then California, Connecticut, and MI was that Mississippi, Missouri, Michigan. How can all three of those? Um, it says CRV, which I don't know what that means. And then it says manufactured under license of U.S. patents, and then it lists four different patent numbers. How can one glass bottle of cold brew coffee have four patent numbers? How does that work? I feel like there are very complicated inventions that only have, you know, with lots of moving parts and stuff that only have one patent number, but I have no idea what I'm talking about. So moving on. Oh, okay. Here's the, here's the ingredients. Ingredients. Filtered water. Why does it say filtered water? This could just be, this, they could have just poured water through a handful of gravel, right? That's all that really means. Filtered water, coffee, and Hawaiian cascara ex- extract. Cascara. I don't know, why that's so weird for me to say. Hawaiian cascara extract. I have no idea what that is. One serving size per container, zero calories, zero sugar. I'm popping it open but my hand is cold and wet and slippery and the the lid is, oh, there it went. I'm taking a whiff. It smells like cold brew coffee. I've tried maybe in my life, maybe three other brands of like pre-bottled, you know, like grocery store pre-bottled cold brew coffee. Uh, Whoa, it says ready to drink, ultra smooth, 
2x the caffeine. And I will tell you, it is 7 p.m., so I probably won't drink all of this. But my throat is getting a little dry and scratchy from all this talking. It's been like 45 minutes, I think. And I don't want to read you everything on here because, I mean, this podcast is about me, not about this silly bottle of cold brew. Um, but it says, we procure premium estate-grown Kona coffee beans grown on the big island of Hawaii, 2,400 miles from the nearest continent. Why is that really such a bragging point? Anyways, where the air is pure, the soil is untouched, and the rainwater is pristine. I've heard some things about Hawaii, especially that big island. I heard it was more of a concrete paradise. But this is hearsay, okay? I've never been there, and this is marketing stuff on this bottle. Also, I haven't tried it yet, which will, for me, you know, if it tastes good, they really could have filtered the water through a handful of gravel for all I care. Can I say that I was, I might have mentioned this in a recent video that I was watching that documentary about how, uh, what company was it? DuPont was poisoning the water when they were making Teflon for a bunch of years. And it was a documentary about that. And then they were trying to do some tests on people's blood to see if this chemical C8 was in the blood and it was in like all, it was in people's blood, but then they had to find, they had to, they wanted to find some other blood samples from people who didn't have this chemical C8 in the blood. And no matter where they looked, they couldn't find anyone that didn't have this chemical in their blood. Like worldwide. It's, uh, that's what I gathered from the documentary anyway. Um, the, the only blood they could find that didn't have this dangerous, like carcinogenic, like birth defect causing chemical. And the, the only people that didn't have it in their system were, was like blood. It was like a blood bank, like a library, like a blood bank from the Korean war, like from before this, they had started this chemical process, right? So they had to go back before it was a thing. But what I'm saying is, I feel like we all probably have at least a little bit of cancer right now. We all have some of these weird latent chemicals in our body. And maybe not the C8 anymore, probably C8. But like all this other stuff. Because there's so many weird things going on in the world right now. People getting away with stuff. I mean, even when I lived in Wilmington, I lived downstream from Fayetteville with it, where there was a DuPont plant. Who knows what else I lived downstream from, you know? It's just like so much weird stuff. Some things are regulated, but so many things we don't know about. It's scary to think about is all I'm saying. And some of it could be in this bottle. It says we blend our Kona beans with 100% Arabica. Ara How do you say this word? Arabica? Arabica? I had... Who gave me, who gave me that Swedish coffee? What was it called? Genovese or something? It's Swedish coffee, French roasted, 100% Arabica. That's like three continents right there. Wait, no, France and Sweden are the same continent, but three different locales like Sweden, France, and Arabia all going into the making of this coffee. I don't know which ones actually have the most effect, but... I'm going to stop reading. It says non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, all natural, shake well, perishable, keep refrigerated. All right, I'm going to put the lid back on and shake, and then I'm going to take a sip because my throat is really dry. And I've been really dragging this out, haven't I? Sorry, I, I pointed the camera up so that I could sit up, but then I've been slouching again, so... Oh no, it's bubbling. Okay, it's okay. All right, I'm gonna take a sip now. Sorry, I'm sniffling. Sniffling away from the mic. All right, I'll tell you what I think. All 
right? In that sip, I was mostly, I was mostly caught up in my th not being thirsty anymore. So I'm going to take another sip where I concentrate more on the flavor. It's pretty good. It is not a strong flavor. I've had some other pre, I'll call this pre-bottled cold brew. Okay. I've had some other pre-bottled cold brew that had much stronger flavor, but I don't mind this kind of more muted flavor. I do want to know what uh, Hawaiian cascara extract is and what's that, what that is doing to me. It has kind of, um, an alcoholic aftertaste, like as if there was some alcohol, like evaporating out of my mouth. I don't know how else to describe it. Also, I feel a little bit lightheaded now. Is that like all the caffeine that just hit me? I don't know why I feel like that. I definitely do feel lightheaded right now though. I'm trying to, I'm trying to just be in tune with myself and, and notice. I feel like there's suddenly like a, the lightheadedness seems like it's kind of coming from a slight pressure within my head, nothing painful. But kind of like a, a soundless buzzing or pressure. Yeah, that's weird. I do feel a little bit dizzy. It must, it's gotta be the caffeine, right? But I've never felt it so suddenly. I definitely feel dizzy. What is cascara? It says contains 231 milligrams of caffeine per serving. This bottle suddenly seems very clear in my hand. Like this is the whole world. I'm holding it in my hand. My lower eyelid is twitching. But some of this stuff could be happening to me just because I'm thinking so hard about everything. I don't feel like I'm overanalyzing stuff now. Don't know. This, this bottle is incredibly interesting all of a sudden. The inside of the label is chrome. As I can see some of the inside of it now that I've drunk some of the coffee. I'm not going to take another sip of that. It made me feel too weird. And the expiration date is um, January, February, March, April, wait, January, February, March, April, May. I almost forgot May, but then I was like, June is not the fifth month. May 25th of this year. All right, we do have one other item to sample. Now, when I got these out, I didn't think that I was going to wait 50 minutes before sampling them. So they're, they're still cool, but not as cold as I wish they were. This item is in a plastic bottle. What what um what shade of green would you describe this as? Um, I don't know how well you can see it. Me here looking at it in real life. Oh, I will say both these items, the one I just tasted and the one I, I'm about to taste, they are both between four and five dollars, which is totally crazy for me because, for example, this this little bottle of cold brew. I used to buy like big, like one liter, at least a liter. So if this is 355 milliliters, like three times as big for almost the same price bottles of cold brew. I guess, you know, it, that's what you get for paying for non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, all natural, um, you know, stuff that makes you dizzy instantly. Anyways, this is kind of like a very light pastel lime, what do you call this, a seafoam green? 
It's a very, what, where have I seen this green before? You know, maybe if smart cars were going to make their cars a shade of green, it would probably be like this. I'm shaking it up because I'm pretty sure you're supposed to do this. Oh no, I'm pretty scared about this. Uh, before I tell you what it is, you might have seen already, but some of you haven't. I'll, I'll read you the ingredients and you <clears throat> see if you guess what it is, all right? Almond milk, after which it, there's an asterisk. What does the asterisk mean? Oh, everything with an asterisk means it's organic. And every single thing in it has an asterisk, except for the very, except for the very last ingredient, which is pink Himalayan salt, which is an inorganic thing, right? Anyways, so all of these are organic. They all have asterisks. Almond milk. And then in parentheses, it says water, almonds. <gasps> There's not an asterisk after water. Worrying. Okay. Dates. Green tea. And then in parentheses, it says water, green tea leaves. Once again, water, inorganic water. Um, matcha, vanilla extract, spirulina, and then pink Himalayan salt. I don't know what spirulina is. Also, it says contains almonds, which I guess is just for people who have allergies. It has to say that because the first ingredient, the first list in the ingredients list was almond milk and almonds. Um, so this is a matcha green tea almond latte and i am a little bit afraid because i can look i can see the color of it through the bottom of the bottle and it's kind of uh the color of split pea soup the brand is pop and bottle it says plant plant powered no refined sugar 80 milligram 80 milligrams of caffeine So this has um, maybe like maybe like a third of the caffeine of the other one. USDA organic, uh, vegan, fair trade, paleo, no gluten, non-GMO, women, women founded. Once again, you can recycle it in several places. Here it says you can recycle this in Oregon for only five cents. Instead of 10, maybe it's because it's plastic and not glass. Um, I don't really know what matcha is. Is it just a kind of tea? Hey, I watched this TV show called Mozart in the Jungle. Have you, any of you watched that? Where he was constantly drinking something out of this kind of uh, metal cup with a metal straw coming out of it. What was that? Was that matcha? That was something weird. Some word that I can't remember that seemed um, that I hadn't... That I wasn't that I was unfamiliar with. Anyways, I'm shaking it. I'm cracking it open now. I think it might be better if it was colder. Okay, it has a sealed. The the lid is sealed underneath. Has a kind of a lift and peel. You know, the, the same, pretty much the same seal on the top that my mustard and ketchup do. In fact, now that I think about it, this bottle is weirdly similar to a lot of my condiments. Not a bad thing. I'm a big fan of condiments. But I'm suspecting that, like my condiments, this little tab they put on the top will never really work as well as I wish it did. But I got it off. Oh, there's a very interesting shade of green. I'm going to take a, a sip of seltzer here just to cleanse my palate. Okay, now I'm going to uh, wait, I'm just making sure my GoPro is still recording because it says before it was saying minutes and seconds, but now it says one hour zero minutes. So I'm just it just I think it just is not saying seconds anymore because there's no room on the display. So I'm just waiting for it to say one minute so that I know it's still recording. You know what I'm saying? I need 
confirmation. Take a small stretch break, reaching up to the sky. Ooh, yeah. Reach to the side. Yeah. Okay. All right, it's still recording. Good. All right, I'm going to take a whiff of this now. I'm going to smell the matcha green tea almond latte. This is popular among some people, so it must have some redeeming qualities. It does smell. It does smell like some, some sort of tea I've had before. Well, even though the first thought in my head was grass, but grass isn't that far from tea leaves, so I'm trying to recalibrate. Right. Ah, all right. There are bubbles just inside the rim from when I was shaking it that look kind of dirty. But I'm going to power through that. I'm going to take a sip now, okay? It's sugarier than I expected. There's some slightly, some essence of a powderiness to it. That also that slight tea flavor. It tasted very green. I'll take another sip. Trying to figure out what this reminds me of. I did one time in Chicago take a, I think it was called a wheat, a wheat grass shot, which I'm pretty sure was essentially just some sort of grass, uh, blended up in a shot. It was non-alcoholic. It was just. So it's supposed to be for your health. It was at some very um, hipstery sort of cafe. I'm trying to go back in my mind now to find what else I've tasted that was similar to this. Because there definitely is something back in the far reaches, back in the dusty corners of my mind, seeing what this connects with. It's like going, have you ever been in like a shop, like a, like a garage, and then they have one of those big magnets on the end of a stick that you can sweep back and forth to pick up like nails and little bits of metal and screws and stuff. I'm kind of doing that with my memory, but I'm sweeping the flavor of this memory around, seeing if it will, see if anything else will stick to it, right? I don't know. It's definitely something. I feel like I might be searching in the wrong section, you know, the wrong, I might be in the wrong drawer, maybe, maybe the wrong filing cabinet entirely. <laughs> that tickled my nose. I don't know. I don't want to waste too much of our time with this because I know. Sorry, I kind of have to burp again. I know our time is precious. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, speaking of precious time, I have been taking, I've been, I know in the past I have stated that I don't like doing video tutorials, but I signed up for um, Linda, which I think is now called LinkedIn Learning. I guess LinkedIn bought Linda, and I've been doing some uh, tutorials on there. Um, so far I've been doing some with Illustrator, learning how to do Illustrator because there's some things like Photoshop I've been kind of learning on my own over the years. 
uh, you know, some, some, some things I think I learned, like learn how to do it the wrong way. Uh, but I learned how to get the things done that I need to get done. Some, sometimes just by brute force or just by Googling each problem as I came to it. But with Illustrator, it was just like too much. And after I had learned, been doing Photoshop for so long, Illustrator was like too much different. And, uh, I don't know, just thinking about it the wrong way. And I think I was really just thinking about it the wrong way, which is what I'm noticing now um, after doing some of these video tutorials. I really do have to burp. <clears throat> All right, that's better. But, yeah, no, I'm having a great time. And what I mean about precious time, why I mention that, is because this guy really does great video tutorials. This this less, this series of courses, lessons video course this thing is called like illustrator 2020 essentials or something like that um i don't know i'm not really advertising this or anything but I just, it's like i respect his ability oh wait i think i have to pause here because i hear sirens coming it'll get loud oh that wasn't too bad anyways i just want to say i i just admired and respected this guy's ability to concisely uh and just be yeah maybe it is just how concise he is with his information how he presents it and uh doesn't waste my time like he just gets into it i've just really been appreciated because that's one of the things i maybe didn't like about so many video tutorials in the past is the you know the long intros and maybe that is what helps about doing like a series of courses, like lessons that come one after the other is that there's kind of like, it's kind of inferred that you'll watch one and then the next. So you don't have to do an introduction each time. They kind of just all blend into each other. You can just watch them end to end to end. And I've been doing that. And there's like little files that come along with it. He's prepared. I know this really sounds like an ad, but don't worry. This is an ad. It would say sponsored up there or something. I just want to say I've been encouraged with how much I've been learning in Illustrator. Um, I've been doing a couple little things in class in Illustrator. I, I did like a little floor plan, like a little drawing thing. I did a, I, I did like a drawing of a, a water bottle in class where we had to like find the geometry of the water bottle with these like circles and lines and how the different, I don't know, it's been cool. It's hard to describe, but I've been having a good time at school. Um, I'm working on building a chair right now, uh, two different chairs actually. Um, in one, in one sense, I'm taking apart an old chair I got and I cut it up, took it apart, cut it up, stripped all the stain and lacquer off of it. And I'm rebuilding it totally differently into a kind of, I call it a Franken stool because I'm like, yeah, putting it back together in totally different, uh, like rotate all the pieces and everything. <clears throat> Sorry, I feel like my voice is going away. But yeah, I'm building a stool and then I'm also in the process of like designing another chair of my own. And that is what I needed the MDF for at Home Depot today because I'm making a quarter scale model. Um, yeah. Where quarter scale means, I think, means three inches is one foot. Three inches. No, one foot is three inches. Wait a second, does that make sense? Anyways, I figured it out. Maybe I can't explain it, but, you know, talking's never been my strong suit anyways. I've And I've drawn up some illustrator documents like a svg with vector paths of like these pieces i want to cut out of the f mdf that is what it's called right and then i want to piece them together so they have like a little quarter scale thing and then maybe if it you know if it all work if that works then i can maybe tweak it figure out what i want to change and then i can do it again on a bigger scale and these are, this MDF is one quarter inch thick. So then at full scale, the MDF, or I don't even know if I want to use MDF, but some, whatever, what would I want to use these pieces would be one inch thick. But oh, down in the wood shop, I'm cutting it with, um, there's like a CNC router. Is that what it's called? 
Yeah, something like that. But yeah, that's why I need the SVGs, the vector files for. So anyways, I'm just having fun with it, is, is all I'm saying. And uh, in, in one class, I'm doing like a bunch of color studies, right? That's crazy for me because I like don't do that. I would have never done that on my own, like practicing like blending colors or what happens, you know, when like light affects a color, blending it with light, blending it with a shadow, you know, like a purple, dark purple with any color. And as this color becomes that color, what's in between, you know, is it like, it's like a different shades of gray and brown and stuff. And I'm, I'm just having a good time. I think I, I don't like, like for so many years, I never took commissions, right? One of the main reasons I never always told people is like, no, I don't want to take commissions because it feels like homework, but I have been love loving uh, my homework. I just, I really enjoyed the, when I'm given an assignment and then for some reason I'm just like, let me go do this. Like, let me just do it, you know? Maybe, maybe because lately I've just, maybe been getting burnt out of giving myself things to do. Like, you know, that's been like 10 years I've been doing that. It's like, all right, Peter, time for you to think of the next thing for you to do. You're, I always have to think of something for myself to do, right? And now finally, there's someone else giving me a sign, an assignment, and it's always something I haven't thought of before and something I don't totally know how to do. So I'm having to learn at the same time, you know, so, you know, get, you know, take video tutorials and stuff. I don't know. I don't know how to completely explain it, but also I think this stuff really might still be affecting me. Am I talking weird? Better wash it down with a little more. It really does taste fine, Kona, Kona Red. Oh, I see it's a, uh, the logo is a picture of a volcano. Nice. There's a zero, zero total fat, zero saturated fat, zero trans fat, zero cholesterol, zero sodium, zero carbohydrate, zero dietary fiber, zero sugars, also zero added sugars, and zero protein, zero vitamins, zero iron, zero calcium, zero potassium. Really, it's a whole lot of nothing in there, making me feel so odd. No, it's doing it again. That really does make me feel weird. And I drink a lot of, like I probably make a half pot of coffee every morning. And it lasts me till, like if I make it at 7.30 when I get there, maybe 7.45, it, it lasts me till maybe 10.30 or 11. It probably, auto, at some point it automatically ta turns off. It's a little bit scary because the coffee machine, when it's done brewing, it lets out like, maybe three or four, maybe even five high pitched beeps. And I keep thinking it's going to like freak someone out and it might, but they're never, so far I haven't seen anyone been like, oh, what is that? And then, then when it turns off, uh, like to turn out, it has like a little hot plate under the coffee pot to, to keep it warm. It lets out two beeps. It doesn't really bother anyone though. Everyone's just chilling, chatting, you know, it's not like it's a sanctuary in there, totally silent. It's actually a pretty loud room. Um, yeah. Anyways, let me know if you are okay with this new format of me just kind of sitting in front of the camera. It's a lot easier for me because I don't have to do an another drawing and then edit that in and I'll save my drawing efforts for other places. I have been putting a little, a lot of effort other places, so this this probably wouldn't have happened otherwise, and this is a, this will be a lot easier for me to continue on with, which I think is a big thing to, f you know, figure out ways to streamline things or the, I don't know what what I'm saying, like the best ways to do things so that you can keep doing them. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, good to talk to you all. Uh, hope you have a good February. Yeah. Here's to the rest of 2020. All right. Hopefully I, I make another one of these before too long. And, uh, yeah. Thank you all for listening. All right. I'm bad at saying goodbye. Aren't I? I do have to
Oh, I have to go right now. I have to go anyway. So I didn't realize it was 730. I thought it was only like 715. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Okay.